Very quick round of introductions would be good. Uh, so I'm Martin Dugiamis. Uh, anybody not know me? Anyone? Okay. Uh, so the Moodle founder, but today uh, I'm representing Open EdTech, uh, hence the shirt. Uh, Moodle is a member of Open EdTech, uh, along with Big Blue Button, and Fred Dixon is right here. Um, so we co-founded Open EdTech together. It's a, an association based in Brussels. Neither of us live there. Uh, so it's mostly a post office box at the moment. But it is a real association and it took us nearly two years to get it set up. It's very hard to do things remotely in Brussels if you're not Belgian. What we're gonna, we're gonna have a, a bit of a discussion today. Um, and uh, an introduction to the concept, and also we want to get some brains going. We're going to have a, some brainstorming together. Uh, so there is a, a little working document. It's not fancy. Uh, we usually use uh, Etherpad for our stuff at Open EdTech, as you would expect. Um, Etherpad is an open source document tool. However, the way we have it set up is you have to be a member to be able to write on it. And a lot of you are not members yet, so you don't have right access. So this is just a Google Doc for today. But I am not. Yes, Katrina. Can I not stand in front of the QR code? Yes. Uh, and, it can, and let's turn off that. Oh. Super. Um, so we're not using it. Uh, gracias. We're not using it uh, immediately, but I, I thought I'd show it up front so that you could at least have it ready in wherever you are. Um, so, anyone need more time? No, nope, we're good. Okay. So, first of all, I'm just going to give you a quick run through of what Open EdTech is and, and what its goals are and what it's trying to do. Why does it exist, basically? So it's here to promote open education technology for quality lifelong learning. And all those words are important um, because there are lots of things that maybe fit one or two of those things, but not all of them. And the association uh, stands for all these. So what does Open EdTech do? Has anybody seen this slide before? Has anyone been to our online meetings and seen this before? Come some hands. Okay, three, four, five of you. Yeah, not, not too many, which is great. So this will be new for you. So the first thing Open Ed Tech does is it defines Open Ed Tech and it promotes Open Ed Tech as an ecosystem and a trustworthy brand. I'll go back on that. So much... Uh, open source and open technology out there on the internet is floating around. You might find it on a little website or on GitHub or on SourceForge maybe, if it's still there. Uh, but open software is often seen as untrustworthy because it could be here today and gone tomorrow uh, or it's uh, the word open can be abused Many people say they are open, but they're not really. Uh, a lot of software is not really designed for education, doesn't have education needs in mind, and so on. So we define open education technology, and you'll see all that in a minute. And we've put a brand on it, so the association exists to make the brand, the OET, almost as a certification, like a stamp, that says, this is open ed tech as defined by the association. And that's the second thing we do, is we certify. So we have a, a list of uh, criteria that we apply, and a particular product we can say, this is open ed tech, or this isn't open ed tech. And if you don't agree with the criteria, you're free to start your own association and do it that way. But that's, that's our definition. So there are five Trust requirements. Yes, Cyril. Oh, jump in anytime. Yeah. 
Oh, most definitely, because you're about to see them. So these are the five requirements for certification. So number one, you have to be open source. So open source rules apply. Uh, opensource.org, or the, they, they maintain an open source definition. It's very widely accepted. Um, something I've been doing in the past few months is being quite engaged with uh, OSD, with, uh, with opensource.org. Uh, because they've been defining new rules for what does what is open source AI. And open source AI doesn't quite fit with normal software. There's a lot of data involved, there's a lot of processes and distribution and so on. And someone like Meta can release Llama and say, oh, it's open source, but it's not really. And so these words are thrown around. Um, but... There is a, another organization that defines open source, and so we just follow what that organization says. And in short, it means the source code is transparent, the process is public, well documented, everything's open for scrutiny, and it means you're, you are free to take it, distribute it, modify it, give it to your friends, your enemies, whatever, distribute it. The second thing, and this is the, it's here is the second thing because it's so important. It must be a sustainable product. There are lots and lots of little projects all over GitHub and all over the internet. And they might otherwise qualify as open ed tech. But we would not recommend a university places their life on it <laughs> because it may disappear, it could be, it could have all sorts of problems. Um, because we are looking for that software to have a long-term vision. So it needs to be backed by some people who are planning for the future with a sustainable business model. And business is not a bad word. Business is literally busyness. It's the act of being busy. And if someone has a plan to work on it and keep improving it, and they have a company perhaps, they don't have to have a company, but if they have some sort of way of supporting that in the long term, that's good. And we, we want to see dedicated people. So people who care about useful software, not profit investments first, not profit-focused investors. So some companies really are designed around profit first. It's like, hey, let's get rich in this space. What can we do? What can we do? Oh, this, this seems to be selling. Let's make some of that. Let's make some of that, right? And then the products are kind of secondary to the profit. Uh, we want people who care about the products and they built a business model around it. The third one, all of these are equally important, by the way. The third one, they have to listen to educators. It's not ed tech if it's not listening to educators. And so... You have to trust that it can evolve to suit educators' changing needs over time. So there needs to be a collaboration with educators. Educators can interact with the developers and provide feedback, and that has to be somewhere clear and easy to do. If you're just making some software and otherwise it fit all the criteria, but you're just dumping it on the, on the world and you don't listen to anybody, that's not long-term thinking. That's not going to support educators' needs over the long term, long term. Oh, sorry, for, I actually got, you're probably taking a photo of me and I stepped behind the podium to hide from you. Um, and developers need to be responsive. So yeah, you, you know, don't just have a forum that's just full of requests and thoughts and you never listen to it. So you need trackers, you need some way to absorb uh, and process and, and deal with all of the requests that you're getting. Likewise, an open source project, I believe, is much healthier if it supports community developers. Some open source projects just have a core team in a company and they might do everything else I've said, but they don't allow anyone else to, to get involved on a developer sense. I feel that is, slows it down. I feel it, it doesn't allow um, growth, proper growth, to suit the whole world. You need to have the very thing that made Moodle successful and Big Blue Button successful is that developers can solve problems in their own environment and push that back and help the community and you have the whole community 
building software together. And that means supporting the developers means you need to give them documentation and support, right? And the last one is that you should use standards. So standards for software allows different pieces of software to connect. And this makes the administrator's job much easier. It also reduces risks, it reduces problems, because you have well-tested ways of connecting software together that are secure, that are trusted, that are understood, that you can build on top of, and that enables interoperability between software, so you have a nice, easy user experience. You know, it's really nice at a university, and honestly, some of the uh, best universities I've seen that do this are actually in Africa. Um, they've been working on Moodle for 15 years plus, some of them, and uh, I'm thinking particularly of the Open University of Tanzania as a particular example. They've been working on this system for a long time and they've just wired everything together into a nice seamless experience for the students across many, many different pieces of software. And that should be easy, right? If, you wanna, if you're looking after a big institution or a company or something, a training system, if you have all the Lego pieces and they just plug together, it's much easier to maintain because everything is changing all the time, right? Everything is evolving all the time. So you need to have good interoperability. It, it also, there are also standards around quality as well. Um, so that the software does what it was meant to do. You say it's going to do this, it should do that. It shouldn't also be a big massive backdoor to some company or... Uh, you know, uh, or, or, or do spying or something. It, it, it's got to do what, it, what it's supposed to do. So that's all the criteria. So we define uh, those, those standards. We're only early in the journey of defining the standards. Um, have I got a picture here? Oh, no, I don't. Not on this slide. Okay, I thought I did. Have you seen the XKCD cartoon where there's this very old one where it says, someone says, uh, oh, this is ridiculous. There are 14 standards for this thing. I'm going to invent a new standard that like is better than all of them. And so they, and then the last slide says, now there are 15 standards. Um, we do not create new standards. Open EdTech is not in the business of creating standards. I've been involved in standards processes before at IMS when they were called IMS, now they're called One EdTech. Uh, I was also part of some MIT work, Harmony or something. Um, and people who get into standards have very, anyone here ever worked on standards? Anyone been involved? I thought you would, I was looking at you. Anyone else? You have to. Um, particularly in technology standards, it's a process of trying to imagine every possible thing that might happen and you invent these, these enormous grand things. And like, it's, like the cartoon, it, you'll probably still miss something and then there'll be another standard. So I don't, we don't get involved in that. We let people who really care about standards do that. But if there are 15 standards for transferring data, wouldn't it be nice if in education, we all chose one of them? We said, this is the one we're all using and all, the piece, all our Lego pieces are gonna use this one. Um, and if it's not perfect, fine, we can, as a group, push on that standard with the, whoever makes it and say, hey, can you improve it and add this and that, whatever, but let's not support too many standards. So we curate, we don't create. The standards we are looking at are data, pretty common one, how you're sharing data between systems. Uh, Interoperability, uh, so how you link systems. Maybe you want to log in on one system and then your account is automatically on all the other systems. You're automatically logged in on them all. And very importantly now is tech stacks because a lot of functionality is actually building up other pieces of software, like in AI very particularly. Um, there, is, there are many, many competing tools if we just use the same tools, we have the same language, we're gonna move faster than if we're all using different tools and uh, in, the, in the whole development stack.
Any questions on any of that before we move on? Anyone? All right. Awesome. The last thing we do is what we're doing now. We, it's about networking. So bringing people interested in the whole concept together to push it forward and define what should we do? What are the standards? Um, we're on Fred's computer here, so we don't have all the tabs that I had set up. Uh, I was going to show, I was going to show the website, but hey, maybe this will work. Does that work? It's not a link. Is it a link? No, it's not a link. So, website is uh, openedtech.global and you can find out about the association here and all the stuff I just showed you is here. So, we have a membership structure. We don't have very many fees because we're not doing so much and there's actually no one employed by Open EdTech uh, full-time at the moment. It's very part-time. Um, so, the fees are quite low but we hope to have one or two people that are dedicated to working on these things to push things along faster. Um, and so we have a membership structure here. And to be the highest level member, you actually have to be approved by the board, which is currently Fred and myself. It will grow, because once you join, you can join the board too, is uh, those, uh, the full members uh, are generally going to be the open ed tech products that got certified. And so you're helping to uh, define the next level of open ed tech products. And over here, you'll see a directory, and this is sketchy, right? This is sketchy right now. Um, you might think this is an AI-generated image, but it isn't. I literally did this with Legos and took a photograph. Um, so here's all the standards, right? And this is OET drawn from the pile of standards into the logo. It's, it's a symbol. So we have certified open ed tech products. There are two at the moment, Big Blue Button and Moodle. And there are some links there providing evidence for all of the things that I talked about. You know, trackers and interaction and so on. Uh, if a product doesn't if it ceases to do those things at some point in the future, it will lose its membership. So uh, it, we, we do check that. Well, it's only the two of us, so it's a bit in the family at the moment, but we, we want to grow this thing. Uh, and here are some uh, like suggestions. These are things that are on the table for discussion as standards. Um, they're kind of obvious ones, right? But they're not, they're not actually accepted yet. These are just... Draft, they're in discussion. So Activity Pub, anybody not know what Activity Pub is? Don't know? Activity Pub is the W3C standard, the World Wide Web Consortium, which didn't it just close? I think it might have closed. Um, did it? Did W3C get closed down? I have a feeling something did. Um, anyway, Activity Pub is the standard, the underlying things like Mastodon. Anybody here on Mastodon? Awesome, 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 awesome. Get on Mastodon, get off Twitter, get on Mastodon, it's, it's the cool place. If you join Open Ed Tech, you get, an, you get a free uh, Mastodon account on our openedtech.social server. Uh, so ActivityPub is for streaming content between services in a very nice way and it builds the, what they call the Fediverse, the federated universe of content. And that's what allows Mastodon to be like a huge Twitter. It's like Twitter or X. Um, but nobody owns it. There are hundreds and thousands of servers that e ind individuals run and it all works together and provides one seamless service, just like email. Right? Email is one of the best open systems ever devised. I guarantee, it doesn't matter what social media you, you use, you all have an email account. And your email account, your email account, allows you to send an email to her and she can send one to him. That's the power of open interoperability. You have systems that are infrastructure 
that last for decades and nothing can kill them. Most websites, you need an email to log in, right? Like it's literally the basis of the whole internet. So ActivityPub is a similar standard and these kind of standards are, are really great. Uh, LTI, one of the standards from One EdTech that I love the most. Uh, I don't love all of them, but that one is a no-brainer. Learning tools, interoperability. Many of the sponsors that are here are integrating into Moodle through LTI, and it just allows them to seamlessly be connected to Moodle without being too complex. Uh, Matrix, anybody here on Matrix? You should get onto Matrix. Uh, all of the Moodle, <laughs> all of the Moodle community forums, well not the forums, all the Moodle community chats are on Matrix. Like there's dozens of them. And Moodle HQ itself, we use Matrix for all of our chat. We have done for the last two years. So it's our major messaging tool. Now I know WhatsApp is popular in many countries and Telegram and all these other things, Slack, but they're all proprietary in some way. You can't build things that connect to it or add on to it very easily. Uh, you can't own it. Somebody could take it away from you at any moment. And that's not good, especially for education. So we, Matrix is a possibility. RSS, one of the oldest ways. To, it's sort of similar to ActivityPub in some ways, but it's simpler and allows you to stream things. And, uh, well, accessibility standards here. Uh, and uh, WebRTC, which is a way of streaming video. So look, this is draft. There's a few early ones, and we'll update this soon when we uh, get uh, get some more finalised. What tab are we on? Yeah, ah, uh, yeah. That's it. So uh, we're on to the brainstorm. Um, so what we were hoping was for, you want to come up here as well, Fred, and help me out here? Otherwise I'm just talking and you get one voice. So, yeah, come sure. on, you, I can take, take I over. can take over a little bit. Okay, so there's a vision behind this, and look, just think back 25 years ago when Moodle started, I mean, I think back when Big Blue Button started, it was just a small idea, and you just kept pushing and pushing and you never gave up. So the argument here is that standards win, but the stronger argument is that we need open standards to win for open education. So we have this idea. There are challenges ahead. So what we thought we would do is make this a workshop, which it is, and ask you first, if you have look, log on the document, we have some space below this. What are the barriers do you see? These, these are the ideas we have. What are the barriers do you see, the challenges that we have to overcome to make open ed tech global, like known everywhere, and to achieve the goals that we have, that any open educational technology has those five pillars and it's for the benefit of everybody. So what I'd like to ask then is, and maybe I'll get Martin to write things down as they say it. Hmm. So we were gonna say, what? just get your input first. We are visionaries, we want to make the world a better place, there's lots of challenges ahead of it. Tell me what you see as some of the challenges that we're, going to, we're facing or going to face it could be in Latin America, which is probably a good place, to achieving these goals that we had. Anybody? What's that, Anna? Yeah, I'll, I'll, for this bit, I'll write them, and then as you get into groups, you can write in here. But yeah. for now, let's, let's have a discussion first. We were hoping to get four or five challenges that you know, we're gonna face, and then have you guys work together in groups on them for maybe 20 minutes or so and then come back and each of you take a turn to present. And this is how open source technologies and open educational resources get created. Just before we jump into that, just reacting on what I've told you, does that all seem like a good idea? Who, who thinks it's like, wouldn't it be great if this thing was more mature and it was pumping along and we had, a, that, that directory page was really evolved? Wouldn't that, would it be good? Hands up if you think it was be good. Um, who, that's about half, who's doubtful? Who's doubtful that it would be useful? I thought so. Cyril. Oh, I didn't even okay. have to look. Yeah. All right, see ya. <laughs> no, no, stay, we need, we need critics too. Um, so most of, and who's not sure? Anyone not sure? Still, yeah, okay. 
you got different things on your mind, obviously. You don't need to worry about this. Um, and that's fine because but the whole thing came out of a reaction to the dominant narrative. The dominant narrative on the internet today is – Oh, we are a big tech company. We have provided the solution. It costs X dollars per month. That's it, right? Buy our solution. Build your institution on our solution and done. And it's, there's lots of venture capitalists behind it. Uh, there's lots of turnover of these companies as venture capitalists buy and sell them. And sometimes they just disappear. Uh, that's the dominant thing that's happening around on big tech uh, well, you would think so because they're, very, they're the most noisy. But there is so much open stuff going on that are not as noisy. And if you're not looking for it, you don't hear about it. But all the people doing cool projects on GitHub and all the people doing good stuff, they don't have so much of a voice. So this is intended for us to come together and have a big voice and say there's another way. We can build things in this sharing, open, interoperable way. So uh, that's why open ed tech. That's kind of the, the if you want the the idea behind the idea. So, oh. yeah. All right. So Cyril, what do you see as an obstacle for us to reach that goal? Here, I'm going to give you them. Do we have any more? I, I am by no means negative here, unlike what Fred might have implied. Um, I'm rather challenging, as the slide suggests. Um, long story short, uh, I think we want here to adopt uh, simple marketing milestones. In other words, um, you might expect the members to come up with a, a single value proposition, as marketers say. They want to offer, as soon as possible, an MVP, a minimum viable product, uh, et cetera, et cetera. What I say here is one of the reasons, to my understanding, so many open technologies remain below the table uh, is pretty well reflected by what happens within Moodle, where the Moodle users association is actually an association of Moodle admins not of Moodle learners, not of Moodle t teachers, it's actually admins. And open source technologies are often, often bricks of very useful technologies. I'm not opinionated on, on their value. I'm missing sometimes someone to explain me where the value is. What is the most important value within those technologies that are available that I could aggregate with other technologies that we use, because I'd rather use something free, uh, contribute to an ecosystem, than buy something that is just better marketed that, than what's free. Yeah, I didn't go deep on those, I, but some of the reasons for open education technology are to reduce risk. So like I said, companies disappear. You remember Edmodo? A lot of people were teaching on Edmodo and then pff, gone. Uh, Google deletes products on a regular basis. Every year they delete products. And you build everything on them and bam, they're gone. Um, so there's risk there, but also there is a trust factor. Uh, it's about the risks of privacy. The, you know, with open, open, open source, you own the system. You own the data. It's yours. It's not someone on someone else's system. I, I do not deny so, that. I'm just yeah, saying. But you wanted I just, to. I thought you wanted to hear the I, I, explanations. I, I, I yeah. just filled in. I'm now a follower. I was just a member, whatever that meant. I uh -huh. just. I was just entitled the newsletter. Now I'm yep. a follower. Okay. Super. Thank you. Okay. Um, please join. Yeah. At um, least do that. It's free. That's the free level. Um, in the in the registration, you know, the, just a couple of questions. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, that would yeah. be you know. Okay. Options okay. like, yep. what is your single value proposition? I see what you mean now. Yeah. 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 Um, when do you come up with a minimum viable product? What do you offer? Um, what do you need from our community? I, I don't know. It's simple, basic questions yep. that investors would ask you. Yep. We, we've, we've been improving the website several times. It gets better and better, but a lot of it is in the website, but it's not during the sign-up process as such, but it could be. It's a good one. And... 
And I, it could be even simpler and clearer for sure, maybe. Any other ideas? And it can be anything, right? It doesn't just a, a comment and an idea. First, a comment from looking at it the way you you, you presented the website. The the two the two only members are you two. So anyone anyone that digs, there's the two creators, the two board members are heading the two companies that are the two members. Um, that's a roadblock, in my opinion. You yep. need to quickly get mm. some new members, and yep. and your uh, five. Um, uh, your five uh, uh, levels or five, um, uh, yeah. The, the membership levels. Member no, 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 the membership levels. No, no, the five uh, the oh, pillars the, of, of, uh, of the your criteria. criteria. Thank you. Yeah. Are pretty strange. I mean, they're pretty hard. They're not, they're not for everybody. No. And, and um, maybe you can propose, because you know that ecosystem so well, uh, people that you already know could, you know, could, um, fit into those criteria. Oh, we have a list. Yes, okay. it's okay. Uh, we're getting into talking with them. But that would be good to, to market that list. It would give credibility to yep. the whole environment. Say, hey, which yep. is not just, you know, Moodle and, and, and Big Blue Button. It's a whole ecosystem that would benefit from it. And oh, here's, yes. Okay. And the second, the, the second thing I want to add is, um, to tag along with what Cyril was saying, um, you also have a, um, a, a mentoring role to play in this. Yes. Therefore, you, I, I didn't. I, I, I didn't. It didn't sound well to me when you were discarding. Not you didn't discard them, but that's the way I, I felt. Yes. Uh, the, the the small project on GitHub and and sort and you know. Yeah. And and that you were there twenty years ago. Yep. And. Um, those people need help. Correct. Okay. So they don't necessarily need a, um, a standard or label or be part of you know, OET, but it's like, how do I get there? And so yep. that whole training, that mm -hmm. whole mentoring, um, and if you start doing, if you start providing mentoring, then all of a sudden, um, above and beyond the, the marketing uh, aspect of the, you know, the minimum uh, uh, MVP, you, you, you bring something to the table. And so you can be mentors and make companies emerge and product emerge. So yeah, that's a really great thought, and uh, I totally agree. The, the whole idea of having the structure defined is like that's your goal, I guess, where, we, where, where you can come into. And, yes, it would be outreaching into them as well. I actually do that now and then. Is I do talk to young developers and say, hey, you know, do it this way. Because they're often lured by the startup model, you know, the Series A, Series B, and like that model. So one challenge there, and maybe you could help, is like you're almost saying about a maturity module or an incubation process, process mm. or something that graduates from stage to stage. If we put that in place, it helps those projects if they want to get to a part, place where they're influential in the open ed tech ecosystem, maybe they see this as a way or one of the ways to do it. So maybe helping us define what those stages might be, that would be a great outcome of the workshop. And if any of you know any of those products because you're using them, Maybe there's a group around that. We could start like thinking and who who should we talk to? I'd love that hit that's list. Sort of, that's sort of the idea of listing. Yes. If, if, if you imagine you've got imagine you've got a, a, a um, I mean it's the basic startup of uh, of of you want to have mass critical mass, okay? Right now it's just the two of you. If you want critical mm -hmm. mass, make it free and interesting for anybody. So anybody that has something to do with that tech, yep, come and join. Come and yep. take a look, and and what you get in return exposure maybe or or mentoring or you get into the first stage of I'm gonna you know the great Martin and, and Fred will teach you how they got where they are today. I don't care what it is. Uh, could be a webinars, okay. Um, and once you can say that, hey, look, all of those actors, however their sizes, are part of Open End Tech. They're not. La you know, they're not labeled, hmm? they're, not, they're not yet. Like an incubator. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You would draw, because, of the, because of, the, of the appeal of Moodle, because of the recognition of Moodle as an actor, you would draw a ton of, of people that you don't know, I don't know, we don't know, because there might be somewhere in a, an incubator in you know, the West Coast, and, um, and that, that could jumpstart the, 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 
Yeah, it could make it real. It could make OET real. It would be great. Yeah. It would be nice to even help the funding. Like support yeah, yeah, absolutely. Then you can exactly. a real incubation. Yes, yes, exactly. And incubation in the open source, uh, you know, sense. Yep. You 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 have uh, you know, venture capital, not venture capitalists, but you've got investors that are looking into founding those type of projects. Yep. They don't want to do the standard, you know, seven years, I'm out. What's the exit? You know, what's your your exit uh, strategy or some kind of question? It's what's your growth strategy? What how you know? What are you going to do for your 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 customers and users? I'm, I'm thinking we could also attract funding from other people towards that and we manage it. Yeah. So how many, how many challenges do we have so far? Um, well, let's just keep, keep going, going with the random thoughts because I think we're having a lot of uh, oh, sparks coming. And, right there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just to piggyback on what we were just talking about, it's a personal uh, interest of mine to see the involvement of more pre-trained models when it comes to Moodle. Uh, you have companies like Hugging Face that have like a whole series of libraries and pre-trained models that uh, you can essentially fine tune to kind of like do whatever task you want to do. Yeah. Um, I, I, I've mentioned before that I'm also relatively new to the whole Moodle world, so forgive me if uh, I'm repeating certain things. Um, but I think that for uh, Moodle 4.5, uh, you need like either an open AI credential or an Azure uh, account. But again, like if you're able to create plugins using, you know, any of the Hugging Face uh, Libraries, you could essentially do that oh. the, the same way. Yeah, so it says open, you talk about in the Moodle 4.5. Yes. Yeah, it says open AI, but it's actually the open AI API, which most open source, like Olama supports that, all those uh, inference engines support that standard. So it's actually meant for them too. Mm -hmm. um, so it does support them, and that's really a first priority in Moodle. So, right. um, but that's a bit different from this, maybe. Um, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. No, um, but I totally agree. That's and and actually, uh, when I was talking about stacks before, uh, I didn't wasn't one of the examples, but uh, I think Olamo is a quite obvious candidate for something we would say, if you're going to run open source AI, you put it in Olama, because um, that seems to be very popular. It's winning. It works great. Yeah, we use it all the time. Most of my AI runs on my laptop now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, I might make another list about that, actually. Uh, All right. Other challenges or thoughts about how we might, the barriers we might encounter, or just feedback that you have? And then we're going to sort of summarize this. We want this to be a workshop, so we'll get you to kind of work on a few things, and you'll take some turns and just present. Very, very easy. Any other thoughts? Anyone's thinking? Anyway, even could just be. A, is there some standard, some project you like, something you've looked into, something interesting? Um, come on, David, you got something. I've seen every bot. I've seen the INC in my bot. Yeah. <laughs> you do. <laughs> yes. So I don't forget this time. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Good. No, oh, I like a man full of words or a woman full of words. <laughs> um, usually, when I worked with a lot of startups in projects like this, that's why I've got it. It's, it mm. comes easier to me. But uh, one of the things I always ask is, who are going to, who are you going to piss off with that project? Oh. All right. So what are you running against, basically? And, and that might be because you're talking about you know, issues that you have. So who, who are you, um, are you gonna piss off large, you know, large companies? Are That's you gonna funny. upset uh, other st I mean, standards that will, you would not include? Are you gonna upset uh, open source wannabes that will not be accepted into uh, OET? Um, and you need to uh, make sure you keep those people, either those people at bay, or you're, 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 you have to be ready for those, those punches that they're gonna throw at you. Uh, they might discredit you, they might you know, try to you know, say that you're, you know, this is just a pet project of Moodle and, and, and Big Blue Button, that you're just, you know, anyway. So uh, just, just who are you running against and how to prevent those attacks. Mm, very good one, yeah. Um. Cyril over here. 
Okay. Let's give it to the runner or pass it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, in case you're not bored of my propositions. Um, What's specific about education is uh, knowledge. I do not see anything uh, about knowledge. I think we, we want to include as soon as possible um, content providers, of uh, knowledge content providers. In other words, I think one of the first members should be uh, Wikipedia. And uh, one of the first uh, workshop would be uh, how to work on Wikipedia or Wikimedia APIs to make them as simple as possible for any newcomer. Um, uh, same with um, the, the, one of the largest single uh, job in any country is uh, teachers. What about teachers? Where are they? I think we want teachers. Most of teachers in most teachers in any country don't work for money. They work because they're passionate. And we do want to build a community of teachers that we want to use those solutions. Uh, so you want a third party here, which is um, uh, teachers, communities, representatives, syndicate, unions, you name them. But without teachers, as uh, Scott was saying earlier today, we're nothing. I, I always, when this is more developed, I had always dreamed that a parent would approach a school with their child and say, before I enroll my child, do you use open ed tech? Like that would be a real, if it was that well known, it would be very nice. Uh, teachers rarely and, and get the opportunity to have, uh, to make the decisions, but they do have input. So they could be saying that to their institution. No, they, they use, I mean, the, uh, yeah. every, every week we, we see teachers coming to us saying, uh, we talk about security and they say, oh, we're, I'm super safe. I've set up my Moodle in my garage on a server. I'm safe. Data is safe. Mm. Okay, well, let's start from the very beginning about security. But um, what I'm saying is um, one of our weak points, I would say, uh, people in, the, in these rooms is we know pretty well people in our own professional communities, but we're not as ecosystemic as we might. And I, I wish in Moodle Moots there were, you know, teachers groups, like invited teachers that would talk about teacher concerns and maybe mm -hmm. students about how they envision what they would like in a class, like what was shown earlier this morning, like this, uh, not innovation, inventive, I don't remember what the name of it was. Oh yeah, it's pretty common at Moodle Moots to have in teacher innovations coming up. Yeah, but it's it's always very Moodle related. It's not like well, I haven't I haven't seen any teenager here, have I? Yeah, it's that's budgets. <laughs> no, but trying to make budgets well, work. What I'm saying, if if you're talking about open mm. attack, I think you might want to find a way to provide access to people who are not knowledgeable about te technology, not knowledgeable about pedagogy, but uh, who mm. might have a say. I mean, I'm. I work, I'm a board member of a dropout, uh, <clears throat> the dropout school, I mean a school for dropouts, kids who just wouldn't get out of bed at age, age 11. There's nothing, I mean, in my country, there's nothing for them. Yeah. So. Uh, it, it, users are included elsewhere, a lot of other places. Uh, our, our teams do go out to students and teachers all the time. Uh, and that happens in UX research, process. Yesterday, I was at a un local university uh, in an auditorium with 300 students having a discussion with them about the future of their life. You know, they were talking about what to, what's the one thing I, someone asked me, uh, some students that stood up said, what do you recommend we focus on in our education for the rest of our life? And now you've told us about all these AI and future things coming. Uh, and we had a really good discussion. Um, so I think there are things happening, um, not just me, but with the whole Moodle team, and, and you can too, obviously, and your role. Uh, so we're all talking to users. But at Moodle Moots, it's very just financially difficult to get them into a room. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that would be it, to get them involved in Open Ed Tech. I think that's great. I, well, it's there, and I think that's something to consider. I, I think Open Ed Tech needs to be a little bit more mature, maybe. Be, it needs to be a bit more mature before we get there. 
Um, well, what do you think? I mean, I think we should get these brains maybe apply to some of these, pick a couple items, and then, I mean, we kind of have, I could sort of see a group over there, I could see a group over there, and maybe there's two, four tables in the center, so I think we've got kind of four groups. I, I would say start adding bullet points under these, like if you want to flesh out some of these ideas, have a, have a discussion around the table. Does anybody want to volunteer to take thinking about the marketing steps or anything like that? Do you want to you take that one? Come and join oh, Cyril. Oh, wait, uh, I think there's one more in the corner. Can I mention one more? Yeah, yeah, please. Well, I like the open brainstorm as well. The, what I was thinking of is, you know, there's these standards and trying to think of what ones are missing. Yeah. So if we could picture this utopian world of online education or open education, what standards or what tools are missing, hmm. and then we can start to look for them and then put them in the incubation and mentoring programs and stuff like that. Great. I'll put this. Uh, so you're thinking about standards that literally don't exist yet or that we yeah, haven't yeah, yeah. talked to, about yet? Not to create them. Yeah. Uh, but to see what is missing, what we are missing from this holistic picture of open ed tech. Yep. And then maybe individuals that are inspired by those things, they can start to look for the little GitHub repository that is starting to yeah. focus on this aspect. Awesome. Love that. For some of this, my mind goes to the total learning architecture and some of the IEEE standards that then were born out of the competency frameworks and portability of those things. Um, so it might also be that these are dependent resources. So um, some of these other things have to come to be and mature and the technology's there because there's dependencies on them in order for the broader ecosystem together to move toward that. Sounds state. like a standards discussion happening over there. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <Right. laughs> uh, so anyone who wants to talk about particular standards, a bit more could be a bit more technical perhaps. It doesn't have to be. If you just think there's something missing, go to that corner. Um, what else stands out? Who are we running against? Who are the... Who are the Saurons in our environment? Sorry, I've been watching a lot of Lord of the Rings lately on holiday. <laughs> Vincent, do you want to take that one? Yep, sorry. I said I don't know the ecosystem as well as some yeah, other people. Yeah, we got people here. Yeah. Let's so, make a group sure, here. Sure. sure, let's talk about the environment. This is more like talk about the environment. Uh, other things we should consider, more specific than what we have here. You can add to that. Right. Um, Oh, one in the back. Do you have your hand up? Yes. Uh, just to add to the who we're running against, I don't know if it applies everywhere, but where I am, it's uh, university and college IT departments and some of the consortium, they're turning against open source, they're outsourcing mm -hmm. their capacity, they're embracing the cloud at all costs. And uh, I'm spending a lot of time arguing with them just to stay on Moodle and make blue button. Yeah, so we... Uh, one of the things we I didn't explicitly call out, but we're very help, very available if you need someone to come in and help with those. Uh, that's we're hoping Open EdTech will be a resource for that. You can just sort of get consultants for free, basically, to come and help out. But there are a bunch of barriers. Like you're hitting objections when you try to advocate for open source, and there's some gravity that's pulling them away from it. Um, maybe from your perspective iterating that and just like, okay, here's what I see happening and here's the challenges I have. And that feeds back to us to say, how could we help you? But that just enumerating them, because we sometimes fill in the blanks ourselves, that'd be great. Who's from more, who's more from the region? Who's from Mexico here? Anyone from Mexico? Yeah? You've been, haven't heard much? Also, I haven't heard from any non-guys yet really much either. So like, <laughs> does anybody want to say, have you got any thoughts? What are you facing at your university uh, where I was yesterday? Uh, what do you want to, um, like what sort of problems and things are you facing that around Moodle particularly, I guess, in your case, but anything? 
Also, sorry. Well, hi, everyone. My name is Karina. He's Pedro. He is uh, the, the person in charge of Moral at the university. And uh, we work with a lot of students, but especially in my area that I'm in charge of English and the language center and English for teachers because it's mandatory for them to take it. We work with PII, uh, we call them PII courses, English, um, English courses, and they have to take them. And after the pandemic, before the pandemic, we had 5,000 students, but 80% of our students were taking the English courses um, face to face. So that 20% were online. During the pandemic and after, uh, it was 100%, but after the pandemic, when we went back to schools, 80% uh, of our students, now we have 6,000 students taking the English courses and 80% of them are online because um, they, they, they are able to choose and they have chosen that. So um, the biggest problem that we are having now is that we have all our courses are on model. He's a great helper for us to, any problems that we, are, um, that, that we um, face, he tries to solve them. But um, the biggest problem is that we have a lot of students using it and sometimes it's not as um, friendly as we, we need it to be. So, for example, do you find students are starting like WhatsApp groups to, for, instead of the, using Moodle? No, they do have to use Moodle. It is yeah. not an option. I mean, right. and they do have to, to use Moodle. On, in the courses, but okay. um, then we have a lot of students, and we have uh, we have had to train our teachers to use the the model platform, and we have um, the model, and we have a platform, and uh, sometimes it's hard for them because they have a lot of students. So, but that's because of we are a public university, and we do have. I mean, each teacher has six groups. Each group has thirty students. So it's not as hmm. friendly to uh, so be grading in the model. I mean, all the model activities, especially for speaking processes. Okay. We could talk about that tomorrow after my keynote. Because anybody else got anything they want to say? No. Yep. You can. You volunteering for a group? <laughs> no. What? There. We have half, so, an hour, half um, an hour left. Go on. Yeah, I'm completely new to this, to this topic. So yep. I, I saw your name and open ed tech, and I thought, okay, I take the time and, and listen yep. to it. Um, and when you were uh, presenting these pillars, I thought um, on, during the point, the pillar uh, sustainability, how you want to ensure it, for example, that this uh, project or this, this, this tool is on a solid. Uh, financial basis so this is you have criteria there as well some rating agencies or something like that that can really assess this because I've checked no. the web page um, how no it's it's a number of, of you, you should almost see it on the website like it's going to be pretty clear we don't we're not going to go and audit people yeah. uh, but we do want to make sure that when you talk to you can talk to someone you can tell if they care about that or not yeah. But, but many open source projects are side projects from, from one person who has a job at a university or something. It's exactly what I had with Moodle. Yeah. I was working at my university doing Moodle on the side and I thought it would always be on the side. I thought, oh, I'll, I'll be an academic one day. Uh, and then it rapidly became an issue. I had to start supporting it and building a business. So, yeah, but I, I, we, we want people who've done that thinking and are, are well on the way and thinking about sustainability, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So because to get on your list, you need your really um, strong uh, arguments as well. So and it, the history, to be honest, it, it's, but in my understanding, what I see. It's the same level of diligence that I think you would do if you were selecting a product to build your big learning system on. You would probably look at the website and talk to them and find out, are they going to be around for a while? You know, that's so we're just going to do that for you, basically, and say yes, we've done that. Yeah. Uh, 
All right, doing some group work. Okay, maybe just summarize who do we have um, on this, these tables over there. You guys are gonna work on, and gals, you're gonna work on, you should give us a table or group one. You got 20 minutes, so it All won't right. take long. And just to summarize, so group one is what topic? Group one over there, standards. Okay. Standards missing. And then group two with Vincent. I was like. What are companies running against? What's around us? It's about putting some specifics. And then you guys can edit these docs as well and put the notes in and we can summarize at the end. Okay. And then I think in the back, two tables or three tables, what was the, was the, what was the challenge you guys were going to look at? The marketing. These are all marketing people. Okay, how are we going to better market EdTech? It, open EdTech, it's, it's a really good yeah. point. Um, we need to do things differently today than we probably did five years ago. So help us out. And then I think this leaves Cyril and your two tables. Oh, no, that was also better marketing. It was marketing? I think. Okay. Three things, that's probably good. If we work for 20 minutes, we'll have like three minutes each to do a presentation. Sound good? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, I think that actually. Okay. Uh, Let's say um, speed up growth. So that would include the mentoring and quickly getting other products on board. Any ideas like that, allies? Yeah, stages, sure. like how do we get projects into open ed tech? We say that this is what we need, but how do we get them there? Yeah, and um, you know, things. getting memberships, like teachers, students, you know, maybe later on, but Okay, just grouping things together a little bit more. And, oh yeah, that can go under growth stuff. Uh, oh, where did I put it up here? I'll make that four. So get a specific, a specific is good. Like if you, in your brain, if there's like a particular thing that you know, like a, a a website, a company, uh, something, a standard that you know, like specific, even if it doesn't cover everything. It's like small things are actually useful here. We don't want to be too general all the time. Um, yeah, I might leave that one out for now. Okay, well, that's four groups. That'll do. Yeah? Okay, yeah. I Where think was 15 minutes. So um, one over there. Yes, David? You need to open up edit access. Oh, Thank you. Go to share. The link was public. And, oh, viewer, of course. Thank you. You've already solved one of our problems. Uh, All right, have a person in your group that has the laptop connected to it. Have them take notes and let's these things always start cold, you know how it is. Yeah, just and then in. once you get going, we'll get going. So one over there, two was here. Uh, you are number four? Okay, four over here and three at the back. One, two, three, four. All right, students, the teacher's coming over. Quick, pretend you're busy. All right. Who's gonna who's gonna talk? Just you got a couple of minutes to say something. We can talk about the unknowns that we've discovered. <laughs> yeah, it's updating. It's all up on there. On there, so 
We just started to tackle right, the... Sh- everyone, everyone listen. We've got group one over here. One minute. All right. We were talking about the standards and tools that were, that were missing. And so we started to quickly brainstorm what we felt was missing from the picture of open ed tech. And uh, one of the biggest ones was this overarching system to facilitate the imp- interoperability between tools. So kind of like the glue that holds all of these systems together. It's very apparent, you know, with Moodle and Big Blue Button, they're obviously integrated together very closely. Hmm. But as we bring on more members, hmm. what, what is that glue that holds them together? Uh, another example in, in, in North America was a student information system. So like that higher level that's keeping track of additional data. Uh, another one was achievement portability. So saying that you had done one aspect or one achievement or one competency in one location, being mm. able to move that over with you, what standards, what rules are around that. Um, and then again, like what holds these tools and standards together. So single sign on as a standard, it's great. We can use it to get users in the system, but again, how do those systems talk to each other? And then we did talk about uh, very briefly the XAPI CMI5 as a standard for uh, getting you know completion data, that sort of stuff, out of a system. Uh, and we didn't get to the AI stuff just yet. And that's kind of did where you we- did you have any specific thoughts on the achievement stuff? Any- that's that when you came over. That's what I was looking up. So, ah, uh, okay. it was uh, Ben from Blue Sky. He was doing a presentation uh, just about twenty minutes ago uh-huh. on the competency and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. I missed it. Yeah, <laughs> often talked about, but no one's no one's cracked that nut yet. So we could put some weight behind something. I uh, it's, I could talk for hours about this that topic. All right, number two, group number two. You had a question. Just a clarification, if you were referring to frameworks of competencies that could be more widely recognized, yeah, big story. <laughs> yeah. Plus one for me. <laughs> All right, so um, what we did, we first listed a few companies that you could be running against. Um, you, you'll recognize some names. The Blackboard is there twice, I don't know why, but it's. Not because it's dun, 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 <coughs> yeah exactly. Um, we and we got Zoom for you, uh, Fred, just uh, you know, yeah. and Microsoft <laughs> as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, we so what we discussed is the fact that they have an open source segment. All those companies are doing something open source somewhere, in, in, whether it, it's true or not. But and um, you could op- you know you could maybe include those those segment into the the OET process only for diplomacy. Say so you don't get their full support, but you don't get them saying OET is crap, mm-hmm. right? There's, there could be consequences to that, obviously, because then they want to put their nose in what's going on. I, I think it's better to be very well-defined and more exclusive than too fuzzy. Otherwise, it just fades into nothingness. True, but yeah. true. Anyway. So we, 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 you just still have to face what those companies are going to say about OET oh. if they're not okay. I'm no stranger to fighting big companies. I'm sure you're not. That. Um, then we talked about the standards. Uh, so this, if you remember, that's my point earlier was uh, the standards that will not be included into uh, OET. Uh, that's, that was the, that group. So you mm. need to prepare a, a, mm. a response for that. So yep. um, and 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 a way as well, which is diplomatic, is to be maybe be more in- inclusive. And you don't have a you're not included, you're included, but you've got you're not you're included and you're under review. Mm. So all standards are potentially could be valid, sure, but they're under review. You could see under, stay under review uh, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. for years. It's like, you're, yep. okay. So. <clears throat> yeah, all right, just, yeah. Um, then projects, so this is the one we know, but there are other projects probably elsewhere in everywhere that are trying to do this, not mm-hmm. at the scale, because obviously you've got such an experience, but, um, and, and, and so maybe get those people to either join in, help, uh, put them in, you know, bring them into the conversation. This one at Tech in France is, is just an association of, yeah, it's a trade union. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, but for, there was confusion for us in, okay. you know, which was which. Okay. And the toolkit, that's, that's, yeah, we have discussed that before and it's a great idea. Like. Yeah, but slides ready to go. Just, just, yep. 
Actually, the slides I presented are the start of that, actually. Uh, okay, number three. We're running out of time, actually. We've got like uh, 30 seconds each. <laughs> Take a minute. Um, yes, uh, we're number three for marketing. Uh, we just thought of some marketing um, campaigns here or marketing ter terms uh, that we could um, apply to the marketing of open ed tech. Like for example, uh, we that open technology, open source technology are interoperable, reliable, secured, and promotes transparency. It's okay. cost effective, it fosters innovation. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by this? Yeah, um, we have some um, stigma around the open source tech since sometimes, uh, or I don't know if it's worldwide or just Mexico, we like think it's for poor or for... <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, we all know. Uh, so, so we think it's it needs to be uh, something else about Okay, open. I see what you yeah. mean now, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, thank you, group four. Forward. I didn't ask for the microphone, it was given to me. <laughs> okay. Um, the protocol we used was one keyword per person. Um, so, uh, to speed up growth, as was discussed, uh, we just, um, you know, spread what the, uh, the, 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 the first ideas training and mentoring. Um, we felt it would be relevant to have uh, uh, learning milestones for uh, new members, mm. um, some kind of mentoring incubation membership level, whatever it means at this point, mm -hmm. um, and uh, facing the, 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 the milestones and open toolbox. In other words, you don't have to, to, to go through something that is predefined. You, you can use the toolbox as you want and uh, to stress that technology should be result-oriented, that is to uh, really speed up. To attract funder, we considered um, social responsibility uh, commitment, um, early transparency on costs and benefits for the users, not yours. <laughs> That's okay. Um, value for teachers and students. Um, that that would be uh, translated into product sustainability because they're in the long in the long term process, student openness, in other words, education for all, mm -hmm. uh, and research support, yep. as um, even a label from a penetech might be a, a door opener, mm. uh, and about the lies we can, we kind of broke them down uh, OECD, UNESCO, and the like, international organizations, development banks like JIZ, AFD, uh, African Bank of Development, etc. They're endorsers and they have means, um, unlike UNESCO and OECD, and um, uh, knowledge content providers. We didn't uh, dig any deeper. And something that was not uh, talked, uh, and I don't know where I would want to put it, which is um, open, uh, open diplomas. Like IB, International Baccalaureate, is a, is a private brand. And anybody willing to use it has to pay. TOEFL is private. TOEC is private. GMAT is private, etc. And okay. I think there might be all these refer to academic standards, like PISA, uh, TIMM, etc. And I think Open Ed Tech as an organization should have a say on what should be open to the public and available to the public and have instructional, pedagogical APIs, I don't know how to call that yep. at this point, okay. with uh, uh, underlying technologies. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Cyril. Uh, we need to finish, but I'll just very quickly summarize what Table 5 talked about. So we had a quick board meeting over here and, and we resolved to push on what we had a hiring plan uh, which we haven't acted on in a while it's been on pause but we're resolved to get that happening as soon as we get
back in November, uh, which is to hire someone to be, two people actually, to be part-time, but working on this and driving it. And if any of you are interested, let me know. Uh, anybody interested right now? Or you know someone. So we'll need someone who, who gets this and someone who's good at networking and good at learning as they go and, and good at driving a project, uh, doing these kinds of things, starting these things. So we, we have funding for the first year and their job would be to start earning their own funding by the second year. Yep, yeah, just yell it. A lot of very smart people are kicked out of uh, public institutions when they turn uh, 60, 65, whatever. Yeah. And they're they're looking for yeah. ways to keep their days busy and they, they wouldn't cost you a penny. Well, you'll, you'll see on our Open EdTech News, uh, we'll publish the job descriptions soon and we'll start getting that happening in November. So that's our, what we did. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. For, and it's an odd topic at a Moodle Moot, but I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.